Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about the area of parallelograms and triangles and also squares and rectangles and then just about area in general. So we're going to cover a couple different chapters. Okay, so let's talk about area. Uh, first, we need to define what length is. So length is defined in some linear unit. Uh, uh, feet, meters, inches, they're all linear units and it's going to be the distance between two points. So length is defined as a linear unit. In this case, I've identified the length of this segment as four inches. Area is defined in square units, and I can identify it as feet squared, meters squared, or inches squared, because it's some value by another value. And it's basically a series of units that are not in length, but in the shape of uh, some type of box. All right, so we measure area in two dimensions, length in one dimension, uh, so area, again, defined in square units, feet squared, meters squared, inches squared, etc. So an example would be I have my rectangle here, which is two inches by two and a half inches. And that gives me, so two inches wide by two and a half inches high. That gives me an area of two times two and a half or five inches. All right, so an area of a rectangle is going to be the base area uh, times the height. So we can say that this is the base and this is going to be the height. And I can figure out the area of my rectangle by multiplying, uh, and by the way, it needs to be in a common unit, the base units uh, for length times the height units in length, and that will give me the area of my rectangle. Area of a square, since a square has sides that are all the same, all we need to do is to multiply one side times another, or side squared. So the area of a square uh, is the square of a side of a rectangle. So this is a side. All of the sides are sides in terms of uh, how we define the area of a square. So there's no base or height. It's just the side times the side that gives us the area of the square. All right, some other things you need to know. Some area postulates. Every closed region has an area. Uh, number two, if two closed figures are congruent, then their areas uh, are equal. So if I said this triangle here is congruent to, so the triangle in blue is congruent to the triangle in red, then I know that their areas are going to be congruent as well. So if I can prove that these two triangles are congruent by angle side angle or side angle side, uh, or any of the other uh, triangle congruence postulates, then I know that the areas are, areas are also going to be uh, equal in terms of the measure. Uh, number three, if two closed regions intersect only along a common border or boundary, then the area of their union is equal to the sum of their individual areas. So if this was uh, closed region one and this was closed region two, then the, and they only share a common boundary, then the area of one plus two is gonna be equal to the area of this entire uh, figure, which is the green figure plus the black figure. All right, so let's talk about area of a parallelogram. So the area of a parallelogram is equal to the product of the base times the height. Now, uh, base and height are gonna be relative uh, to the parallelogram depending on what you choose as your height or your base. So let's talk about this for a second. So height is going to be the distance between two opposite sides or opposite sides. These sides are going to be identified as the bases. And then the line that forms the distance uh, to the bases is perpendicular to both bases. All right. So let's uh, see how this might play out in this parallelogram. So in this case, um, the base in this case is going to be, let's say, from A to B and then also from C to D, and the height is given in the blue line. So the base is defined by the height or the height defined by the bases, uh, but the height and the bases work together. So you wouldn't have a base C, D, and A, B, and then a height from B, C to A, D. All right, so I'll just say this does not constitute a height if the bases are C, D, and A, B. Or, if the height uh, is here in the blue line, then the base becomes BC and then also AD. So height is the distance between the two bases. BC and AD must be the base if the height uh, in question is the blue line. 
Okay, moving on. Uh, let's talk about how we know that the area of a parallelogram is going to be the base times the height. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, actually I'm going to draw a line from R to B, and that B point is going to be an extension of the base or one of the bases of the parallelogram PM. So I extend PM through B such that RB is going to be perpendicular to uh, the extension through PM. And then what I want to prove is that 1 plus 2, which is the parallelogram, is equal to the rectangle 2 plus 3. Uh, now what we're trying to prove is that the area of a parallelogram is B a base times a height, which is the same as the area of a rectangle. So we want to show that in terms of area, the parallelogram and the rectangle are one and the same uh, in terms of how we show or define their area. So again, base times height is what we want to prove as the area of the parallelogram. So we already know that the area of a rectangle is the base times the height. So I'm going to say that 1 plus 2 uh, is equal to the parallelogram, PGRM, and then 2 plus 3 is equal to the rectangle, AGRB. Well, I know that GA is congruent to RB, so GA is congruent to RB uh, because the altitude is going to be the same uh, from G to A as it is from R uh, to B as I extend the line P through M to B. I know that angle PAG, because I'm going to form a right angle, PAG and uh, MBR are both right angles. I know that PG is congruent to MR because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So I know that triangle PGA, which is uh, 1 or triangle 1, is congruent to triangle MRB or triangle 3 by HL postulate. So I can say that figure 1 is congruent to figure 3 or area 1 is congruent to area 3 by the HL postulate. And again, I know that if the uh, uh, triangles are congruent and their areas are going to be the same and that's one of the postulates that we just talked about. Alright, so then AGRM is going to be congruent to AGRM. So AGRM, this funky figure here, which is a trapezoid, is going to be congruent to itself. So 2 is congruent to 2. Therefore, if 1, uh, if one is congruent to 3, then 1 plus 2 is congruent to 2 plus 3 and 1 plus 2 then is equal to 2 plus 3. So if you add congruent areas to congruent areas or equal areas to equal areas, then the areas, uh, combined areas, are going to be equal as well. So the area of a parallelogram is defined just as we would uh, the area of a rectangle, base times height. So let's talk about triangles. Area of a triangle is going to be one half the uh, product of the base and the height, or the height as the altitude. And remember the altitude is defined as a line, the distance from the vertex to the opposite side. Uh, the opposite side of the vertex. And in this case, we can have three altitudes, uh, one from each of the vertices, and we can have three bases, uh, the opposite of each of the different vertices corresponding to the origination of the altitude. So in this case, we have uh, one altitude and one base. I could also draw an altitude here, and then this would be the base, or I could draw an altitude uh, here, and then this figure, or this line here, would be the base. So one half base times height. All right, sometimes uh, the altitude needs to be drawn outside of the triangle to the base. And in some cases, you'll need to extend the base so that you can draw the altitude. Uh, this is an example where you need to draw the altitude outside of the triangle. Um, however, remember that the base does not incorporate that extension. So the base length is going to be just the length of the uh, base of the triangle itself, not the extension uh, that you provide in order to draw the altitude. That should be a uh, doesn't equal x value, does not correspond to the base. Okay, so how do we figure out that the area of the base or area of the triangle is one half the base times the height? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parallelogram. And the parallelogram I create by uh, drawing A to D such that A, D, and C, B are congruent and parallel. And then I draw D to B. So I have my parallelogram A, D, B, C. And the area of the parallelogram, as we've defined, is the base times the height. So uh, then I'm going to prove that the two triangles that I've just created are going to be congruent. So this triangle ABC is going to be congruent to the triangle 
uh, uh, ABD, or ACB is congruent to ADB. So I prove that by showing uh, that angle DBA and angle CAB are congruent because I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Alternate interior angles are congruent. And then DAB is congruent to CBA for the same reason. Alternate interior angles in the same, uh, alternate interior angles cut by a transversal or defined by a transversal between two parallel lines AD and CB will be congruent. So, and then also AB is congruent to itself. So I know that triangle ADB is uh, going to be congruent to ACB. Now I also know that ADB plus ACB is equal to parallelogram ADBC. So that means that ACB is going to be half of ADBC. And that means that the area of ACB is half of the area of the parallelogram, which is BH. So the area of a, a triangle is one half the base times the height. Uh, and we showed that by creating a parallelogram and showing that the two halves of the parallelogram, which were two triangles, were congruent. All right, so just uh, for review in terms of defining what the area is, if I have a square with a side of four, please figure out what the area is uh, and just units. Rectangle with a base of seven and a height of three. A uh, triangle with a base of four and an altitude of four. And a parallelogram with a height of three and a base of eight. So you can figure those out. You can pause this for a second and then get the answers. All right, so the square is going to be 4 squared, each side squared, so the square area is going to be 16 units. The rectangle is going to be the base times the height, or 7 times 3, which is 21 units squared. Uh, the triangle is going to be 4, 1 half base times height, or 1 half of 16, or 8 units squared. And then the parallelogram is going to be the height times the base, or 24 units squared. All right, that's it for the lesson on area, area of parallelograms, triangles, rectangles, and squares. Please join us for some practice, practice problems in the next edition of Otten Math.